Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our eighth lesson on the third topic of Form 4, which is called Floating and Sinking. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that your passion is for you, your purpose is for others. But when you use your passion to serve others, then your passion becomes your purpose. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at applications of the Ahmed's principle and the relative density. And our first application is in hydrometer. So a hydrometer is simply an instrument which is used to determine the relative density of various liquids. So it is used to determine the relative densities of liquid substances such as the milk. So the hydrometer used to determine the relative density of milk is called a lactometer. Then the hydrometer used to find the relative density of the battery acid, it is called a battery acid hydrometer. Then lastly, the hydrometer used to determine the relative density of beer, it is called a brewer's hydrometer. So these, is, these are the features of a typical hydrometer. It has some lead shots at the bottom, which are actually are waxed or glued at the bottom we shall see why it also has some bulb which has some air in between it then it has some stem then of course it has the scale we have the minimum value at the upper end and the maximum value of the relative density at the lower end so the hydrometer consists of the following features so the first feature is called it has a narrow graduated hollow stem so you can see the uh, narrow graduated hollow stem. So the question is, why should the stem be narrow? So the stem, it should be narrow so as to increase its sensitivity. So you can be asked to give a reason why uh, it is important to make the stem of a hydrometer narrower. So the reason is to increase the sensitivity. You can also be asked to uh, give, uh, or state how you can increase the sensitivity of a hydrometer. So the answer will be by making the stem narrower then the hydrometer also has a wide bulb so you can see this particular wide bulb then of course the question is why should the bulb be wide so it has a wide bulb containing air to displace a large volume of the liquid so the reason why the bulb should be wide is to displace a large volume of the liquid then remember from Ahmed's principle that when a body is partially or totally mass mere fluid, it experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. It simply means that the weight of the fluid that will be displaced, of course the fluid in this case is the liquid, so the weight of this liquid that will be displaced will be equal to the upthrust that will be provided on that particular hydrometer by the liquid. Therefore, the larger the volume of the liquid displaced, the larger uh, the weight of the liquid displaced, hence the larger the upthrust. So uh, the reason why the bulb should be wide, so that to displace a large volume of water that provides sufficient upthrust force to keep the hydrometer floating. So remember, the larger the volume of the fluid that, that will be displaced, the larger the weight of the fluid displaced. And from Ahmed's principle, the weight of the fluid displaced will be equal to the upthrust force provided by such a liquid. Therefore, uh, the bulb should be large to displace, or it should be wide to displace a large volume of the liquid that provides sufficient upthrust force to keep the hydrometer floating. Otherwise, if uh, the upthrust force is not sufficient, then that particular hydrometer won't be kept floating. Therefore, it won't give you the correct readings of the values of the relative density. So it is important that the hydrometer should be kept uh, floating. That is why we have a white bulb to displace a large volume of water, which provides sufficient upthrust force, which keeps actually the hydrometer floating. Then the volume of the bulb determines the density range to be measured by the hydrometer. For example, for the case of a lactometer, which is used to measure the relative density of milk, it usually most of them have scales which ranges from 1.015 uh, gram per cubic centimeter to 1.045 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. So the 1.015 grams per cubic centimeter, which is the smaller density, it will be on the upper end, that is the minimum value. Then the maximum value, which is the 1.045 gram per cubic centimeter, will be on the smaller end. 
Then the last feature is what we call the lead shots. So the lead shot is a waxed or glued to the bottom of the bulb. The reason is to make the hydrometer float upright. So you can see we have some lead shots here which are glued at the bottom of this particular uh, hydrometer. So the reason why you have some lead shots is so that to increase actually uh, the weight or the total weight of the hydrometer and its content so that we shall have a balance between the up thrust and the downward forces. So the downward forces of course will be due to the weight of the lead shot and the weight of the material making this particular hydrometer. So the lead shots are usually waxed or glued at the bottom of the bulb to make the hydrometer float vertically. So this is a typical battery acid hydrometer. So these are the features you can see. We have a hydrometer in between it. It also has the bulb here which is a rubber bulb. It has some glass stem of course to safeguard or to keep the acid within that particular container. Then of course we have some lead shots within that particular hydrometer simply to make the hydrometer float upright. So this is a battery acid hydrometer. Next, let's look at an example which reads that a glass tube of uniform diameter 2.4 cm weighed to float vertically in a liquid. The length of the glass tube immersed in the liquid was 14 cm. If the density of the liquid was 1.2 gram per cubic centimeter, find the mass of the tube and its content. So the mass of the tube, they mean the mass of the glass tube plus the content within that particular glass tube. So from our diagram, you can see that the glass tube, the content within the glass tube are the lead shots. So in short, they want us to find uh, the mass of the glass tube plus the lead shots. But because we know that weight is equals to mg, so if we find the weight of the glass tube plus the lead shots, we'll be in a position to find the mass because weight is mg. So once we find the weight of the glass tube plus the lead shots, then we can apply the formula weight is equals to mg to find the mass of the uh, lead shots plus, of course, that particular glass tube. So for us to find the weight, because we are told that the, bo the body is uh, floating vertically in the liquid, then we know that for a body to float, it simply means that the sum of upward and downward forces are actually in balance. So we will equate the downward forces and also the upward forces. So of course, the downward force will be uh, the weight of the glass tube plus the lead shots then the upward force will only be the up thrust force. Then remember from the Ahmed's principle, which stated that when a body is partially or totally massed in a fluid, it experiences an up thrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. It simply means that the up thrust, which is the upward force, will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. But the fluid being displaced in this case is the liquid. Therefore, the up thrust or the upward force will be the weight of the liquid that was displaced. Therefore, the weight of the test tube and its content, that is W test tube plus the, uh, the lead shorts, which are the content of, those, of that particular test tube, will be equal to the up thrust. But from Ahmed's principle, up thrust is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. So in short, we are simply equating the total upward forces and the total downward forces. Because the body is floating, it simply means that the downward forces has balanced with the upward forces. That is why we are equating them. So the, the upward force, of course, is the up thrust, which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced or the weight of the liquid displaced, which can be given by rho Vg. That is density of the liquid displaced times the volume of the liquid displaced multiplied by gravity. But because we are not given the volume of the liquid displaced, but we know that the volume of the liquid displaced must be equal to the volume of the glass tube, which is already immersed in that particular liquid. Because remember, this particular glass tube, we have this part which is immersed in the liquid. The volume of this part of the glass tube that is already immersed in the uh, liquid must be equal to the volume of the liquid that was displaced. Remember, volume is the amount of space occupied by a body. So for this particular uh, part of the glass tube to occupy space within this liquid, it simply means that it has displaced an equal volume of this particular liquid that it has occupied. Therefore, uh, the volume of the liquid displaced will be equal to the volume of the glass tube that is immersed within this particular liquid. Therefore, when we are finding the volume, we'll use the cross-sectional area and the height. The height will just use uh, the height that is already submerged in the water, that is the 14 centimeters. So, uh, 
density of the liquid displaced times volume of the glass tube which is immersed in the liquid multiplied by gravity so this will give us a uh, rho which is that is the density of the liquid displaced the volume of the glass tube immersed in the liquid will be given by pi r squared because the base is uh, uh, is circular and of course we have the height so it simply means that we are talking of a cylindrical shape and the volume of a cylinder is given by 4 pi r squared h then of course times gravity so density of the liquid displaced we are given as 1.2 gram per cubic centimeter to convert into si unit that is the kilogram per cubic meter i'll simply multiply by a thousand because you know that uh, uh, a thousand um, kilogram per cubic meter is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter what about 1.2 gram per cubic centimeter so that will be over uh, uh, one gram per cubic centimeter multiplied by a thousand kilogram per cubic meter then the pi of course is 3.142 times the radius of uh, the cylinder that is we are given that it has a diameter of 2.4 centimeter so the radius will be half of the diameter so 2.4 divided by 2 its radius is 1.2 centimeters then to convert the radius into SI unit that is the meters I'll simply divide by 100 so a pi r squared so I'll have 1.2 over 100 in meters squared then times the height so the height we are only talking of the height that is immersed within that particular liquid because um, the volume of the cylinder or the volume of the glass tube that is immersed within the liquid will be equal to the volume of the liquid that will be displaced as a result of immersing that particular uh, liquid that is immersing that particular glass tube in the liquid so i'll simply use the height of the a glass tube that is immersed in water which is the 14 centimeter so the height is 14 centimeter to convert into si unit that is the meters i'll divide by 100 so this will give me 14 over 100 then of course this will be cubic meter that is for the case of volume then of course times gravity which is usually 10 newton per kilogram so if you take 1.2 times a thousand you'll obtain 1200 kilogram per cubic meter then 3.142 times uh, 1.2 over 100 squared because it is r squared then times the height which is 14 over 100 you'll obtain 0 0.0000643 uh, cubic meter again this one is correct to four significant figures remember zeros to the left hand side of a number are not significant zero is only significant when it is to the right hand side of a number and when it exists between two and zero digits therefore this one is correct too uh, that is this is five significant figures so uh, times gravity which is 10 so if you take 1200 times 0 0.00063342 times 10 you'll obtain 0 0.7601 newton so this one is correct too four significant figures the zero to the left is not significant but this zero is significant because it is existing between two and zero digits which are the six and one so we said that zero is only significant one if it exists between and zero digits and two when it appears to the right hand side of a number however if a zero appears to the left hand side of a number it is never significant so this one i've taken it correct to four significant figures therefore the weight of the test tube plus the lead shot is equals to uh, mg remember weight is, is given by mass times gravity so the question wanted us to find the mass of the test tube and its content now that we have the weight we can easily find the mass so the weight of the test tube plus the lead shots which are the content will be equal to mass of test tube plus the lead shots multiplied by gravity therefore if i make mass subject of the formula mass of the lead uh, of the test tube plus the lead shots will be equal to the weight of the test tube plus the lead shot divided by the gravity so the weight correct to four significant figures of the test tube plus the lead shots was 0 0.7601 newton divided by gravity which is 10 newton per kilogram so if you take 0 0.7601 divided by 10 you'll obtain the mass of the test tube plus the lead shots to be 0 0.07601 kilogram which is again is correct to four significant figures lastly I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that your passion is for you, your purpose is for others. But when you use your passion, 
to serve others, then your passion becomes your purpose. So the quote is encouraging us to use our passion, gifts, and natural abilities to serve others. Remember that a service can be something small such as a simple act of kindness, uh, a simple act of compassion, a simple act of empathy, a simple act of encouragement, a simple act of love, or a simple act of showing care to those who need it. Research shows that majority of the people in the world who die out of depression do so because they lack someone close to them who can truly show them love, compassion, empathy, care, and encouragement. How I wish that you be the person who is portraying all these positive uh, traits to the people around you because I believe the world will be a better place if everyone showed love, compassion, empathy, care, and encouragement to those around us. And lastly, recall that you are given hands to serve, you are also given brains to think, and you are given a heart to love. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.